Hey there YouTube, Far North Racing here. So last episode we had to stop working on the exhaust manifolds because we ran out of the appropriate tools. Specifically we didn't have a burr that would reach down inside the exhaust manifold to clear away that little step that's inside there. Well, the burr came in, courtesy of Amazon, and we got ourselves our ceramic coating as well. So we're going to take this stuff here and finish up those exhaust manifolds. Let's get to it. So here's the tool we use to get down inside the exhaust manifold. You see a nice long burr. I did this one with the air die grinder instead of the electrical one for safety reasons. When you've got a burr that's this long, this shaft can occasionally bend on you. If the burr kicks and gets caught in something, the shaft can bend over. And if that happens, instead of rotating on its axis like this does, it starts whipping around and all of a sudden you've got a tiger by the tail. So it's nice to be able to shut it off with a dead man switch as opposed to having to reach around on the back of the electric die grinder and you know try and snap that switch off while it's busy trying to jump out of your hands. So yeah, a couple minutes of just plowing away at it. There's a round tip on the end that has some cutting on it. We just scooped it away and now it's all nice and smoothed out and ready for service preparation. A key feature of this burr is the fact that it has a rounded end with cutting teeth on the end here. So you can gouge into things and then smooth them out with a cylindrical bit. If it was a pure cylinder like an end mill, it wouldn't necessarily have those cutting teeth on the end and it's nowhere near as useful when you're trying to get down into something and dig around in it. So here we are, freshly ground down and sandblasted. That area right in there is where that lip was and you can see it's all smoothed out now. Well it must be my birthday because surprise! We were just going through and sandblasting this, getting ready to ceramic coat it, and I noticed this. Right along this weld, it's all cracked. Right in here, and back around into this part of it here. So before I can go ahead and ceramic coat this, I'm going to have to weld that back up again. Because that's NFG right there. So here's another little finishing trick. I just hit all the bolt holes in the manifolds with this countersink just to deburr the entrance of the bolt holes, cleans it up, makes it look nice, gets rid of any sharp edges that might interfere with the bolt. So I've been talking about ceramic coatings, and this is the stuff that I'm talking about here. What a ceramic coating is, is a sprayed on coating, sort of like a paint, that has a ceramic substrate to it. So when it cures, and there's a couple of different chemistries it can use to cure, it forms a layer of an, like an epoxy with ceramic particles embedded into it which has a couple of decent properties. The first one is usually a degree of corrosion resistance. The second one is that it will withstand high temperatures so that it doesn't burn off like a typical paint does. And the third property, it acts as a thermal barrier, which means that it prevents a certain degree of the amount of heat that's inside the exhaust from radiating out into the inside of the engine compartment. It acts like a heat shield or heat wrap but it's a sprayed on coating as opposed to a wrapped on or, or a separate piece. You'll find all kinds of interesting claims being made, like how it increases exhaust gas velocity so it helps turbo spool up and makes more power, and all the rest of that kind of crap. There may be a little bit to that, but we're talking a, a difference of temperature on the surface about 10 to 15 percent. So really it's more about keeping underhood temperatures down more so than it is about trying to find power. It's handy because a lot of the times when you're doing sort of resto mod stuff, you wind up having to take off heat shields or just the engine department and the stealth is so tightly stuffed it gets hot anyways. Adding this on here makes things look nice, keeps things from getting all rusty and corroded, and keeps the temperatures down somewhat. So it's a, basically a win-win-win. The only downside to it is that stuff is freaking expensive. This is a $120 bottle right here. So anyways, two different examples. This one here is Techline Black Satin. I got this at PRI about 10 years ago and has lasted me up until this point. It's done a couple of turbos and a couple of exhaust systems. This stuff goes a long way. But uh, I'm switching over to this stuff called Cerakote. This is their C-Series, which is a air dry, air cure. I've heard some good reviews about this and I was it's easier for me to get this than it was this, so I'm going to go with this. Sprays on with an airbrush, cures over five days, and Bob's your uncle. When you read Cerakote's uh, application notes for how to apply their coating, the actual application is fairly straightforward. You just apply it with an airbrush or a high volume, low pressure spray gun. But they're really, really picky about surface preparation. They want it blasted and they want it completely free of any oils. 
to the point where they want you to bake it in an oven prior to the application of coating to burn off any residual oils like fingerprints. I've managed to negotiate with a better three quarters. I told her this thing has been blasted already so there's no real oil left on it. She's going to let me bake it in the oven with the understanding if it outgasses and weird shit happens that I'm buying her a new oven. I think this is her technique of getting a new stainless steel flat top that she wants. In the meantime though, we're going to toss this one in the oven, we're going to toss the other manifold in the oven, we're going to bake off all the oils according to their instructions, and then we're going to hit it with the airbrush and get the coating put on. And here's what we'll use to apply this, just a basic Badger airbrush, nothing particularly fancy, just enough to be able to atomize it and spray it onto the thing. To hook up the airbrush, nothing special, just a crappy tire regulator and filter or water separator mechanism, just hooks up to shop air. Set it to 40 PSI, and Bob's your uncle. So here we are with what passes as our paint booth. We've gone ahead and sprayed it outside because this stuff smells nasty. When the instruction manual says wear a respirator and PPE, you want to take that shit seriously. This is not spray paint. This is a whole lot nastier. In any case, uh, there it is. Went on fine with the airbrush. No issues at all. Has to hang for 35 minutes for it to cure, and then takes five days to fully cure up. So we're just going to enjoy the spring sunshine for a little bit and let this harden up and afterwards it'll go back inside the shop. So when I bought this Cerakote coating, I wasn't really sure how much it was going to take to do the full coverage. So I bought myself a full pint. And it turns out that this glass vial here in the air airbrush, I'm not sure exactly how much that is, but it's the standard sort of airbrush a small jar. That jar was more than enough to do both exhaust manifolds. It did both manifolds and had a, a little bit left beside. So you don't really need a whole lot of this stuff unless you're doing full exhaust systems or a whole lot of parts. Because I have a lot now, I'm going to Cerakote all the things. It's going to wind up going on the intake manifold and a few other things that I could use with some corrosion protection and some heat resistance. So at least I have that going for me, which is nice. Okay, so here we are 24 hours later, and the coating has gone ahead and firmed itself up. The instructions say that the coating is hard enough to ship or install parts after 24 hours, and I believe it. It's on there pretty good, and I've given it a couple of whacks with the scriber, and it doesn't appear to be shipping, so I'm going to call that good to go. It looks like the fact that we heat treated it in the oven to burn off whatever oils might have been on there, and then the sandblasting finish it was on has worked. The coating appears to adhere, so that's really good. It has filled in some of the surface detail. Uh, Anywhere along here, where there was that gritty feel from where the sandblaster chewed it up. That's been filled in, but it hasn't been enough to fill in the pitting marks from the rust that was on this, which is fine. I don't expect it to look like a fully polished product. The idea is to provide some corrosion resistance and some heat retention. So the fact that it didn't fill in all these little bumps is not a big deal. Overall, it's a really nice surface finish. And if you've gotten like, like along this flange here where it was nice and smooth, that's now nice and that's really worked out well there. And along this tubing along in here, that's, that's looking pretty good. There's a couple of little thin spots, one on the edge of the flange, a little bit on this edge of this tube here, that I would love to go back and touch up. Unfortunately, the instructions say that once it's cured, it's cured, and in order to be able to redo it, you've got to bring it back down to bare metal and shoot it again, which I'm not interested in. So, lesson learned, make sure the whole thing is good and wet, and pay a little more attention to it as I'm going around. And because i got tons more material to do, Probably might be doing the entire exhaust system, the intake, and a bunch of other things. And we have lots of practice shooting it, so that's good. Gonna have to get a respirator though, because that stuff is not screwing around when it when it comes to nastiness in the air. Don't breathe it. It's really, really bad. So to sum this up, uh, what we've done is we've gone ahead and cut the inlets to all the exhaust manifolds to match the exhaust gasket. We found in a couple of spots some weird heralds that have been fixed. So there's a step inside here that's been gouged out and smoothed out. Uh, we found a crack in here that has since been welded up, so that's all fixed. On this manifold, we were able to take the outlet right out to the gasket profile. On this one, as we said in the last episode, we can't because of the way the tubing is constructed, but we still smoothed it up and profiled it a little bit. What that has achieved, at least on paper, is that now flow variations between runners should be a lot better than they were before. This one here, we expected to flow like crap because its inlet was choked off and because of that step inside. This one here we expected to flow like crap because its inlet was really choked off. Now they're all the same entrance, they're all smoothed out. And while there's probably a little bit of flow variation because of length of runner and, and 
you know, the inside corner here and, and what have you, it's a lot better off than it was before, which means that tuning should be a lot more consistent across all the cylinders. And on this side, again, match this all out in here, pull that out and smooth the transition on there so our flow is going to be a little bit better. And on top of that, corrosion resistance and heat retention, which will help underhood temperatures, and looks pretty cool. So I'm calling this project a success. Here we go. Thanks for watching. Stop it now.